Hello everyone. Welcome to pattern making. Today we're going to start draping. All right, now as we go, feel free to ask questions because your questions will probably be a lot of people's questions. So go ahead and ask questions. Good questions. All right, so what I'm going to start with, first of all, today we're going to do collars. All right, and on your schedule, we're going to do a full roll collar, a standing convertible, and then you're going to design a one piece roll. So what I'm going to start out with is a standing collar and I'm going to do a, 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 a just a regular standing collar and then I'm going to do a standing collar with a convertible neckline. All right, so it gets a little bit confusing with collars because a convertible neckline is different than just a convertible collar. So I'll show you how to do both of those, okay? This is my lovely helper here. And this is Susie, in case you're wondering. Um, so she's, this is what we're going to drape on. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about our muslin, okay? So we need 100% cotton muslin because we are going to block it, which means we're going to put it on grain, make it grain perfect, okay? We cannot drape if we don't have fabric that hangs correctly and drapes well. And so we have to block it and get it right on grain. So before we do that, you don't want to take just a big piece of muslin and try and drape it because it's too cumbersome and you want to make sure you just get the size that you need for what you're draping and then we'll block that, all right? So how can you tell what size? Well, one way is to look on your schedule and it says right here, but in case you don't have a schedule, this is what we're going to do. Our first collar that we're going to do is a regular stand-up collar. So in your book, it's the one that um, they do a band collar. We're going to start out with the mandarin collar, all right? Okay, so we're going to measure. We're going to, this is Sue Tash braid. We're going to need it, but not yet. So I'm just going to put it over to the side. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a collar. And when we do our draping, you usually just drape for one half of the body. All right, you need to know which half you're going to do because that will dictate where you put your guidelines on your fabric. Okay, so since we're going to just do a Chinese collar, just a regular Chinese collar, okay, here it just calls it a standing collar, but we're going to call it a Chinese collar and I'll show you the difference between a Chinese collar and a Mandarin collar, at least my interpretation. You might see different labels elsewhere. So what we're going to do is we're going to have this collar, and I have a terrible tape here. Is there a better, this does not have an end. We'll start with this, but we want to have this about an inch and a quarter. Does that have a little better end to it? Yeah, thanks. Okay, so what we're going to do is in the front, usually a Mandarin collar or a Chinese collar, can only be as high from our neck line as, uh, well, we, it, it can't go much, first of all, it can't go past our ears. That doesn't work. It doesn't, we don't want it past our hairline. So typically about an inch, inch and a quarter. So if I have an inch and a quarter here, then I need an inch for a seam allowance. And then you always want to add some extra. So I'm going to go with about a four to five inch Long, uh, length. All right. So you find your longest length and your longest width. Okay. So my width is like here. I just do half of it. That's like seven and a half. And then I need some seam allowance and a couple extra inches. So I'm going to make my first piece about four or five by maybe ten or eleven. Okay. Let me see what I had you guys bring. Five by twelve. Okay. So we'll do five by twelve. <clears throat> okay. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to rip your fabric, okay? Because we need it on grain, we want it to be on the lengthwise yarn and a crosswise yarn so we can block it. <clears throat> so we're going to rip it. And the measurements that you have here are 5 by 12. So 5 is the length and 12 is the width. And see, here's our selvage. So this is our length. So I'm just going to go over here and find our length is first at 5 inches. So I'm going to measure 5 inches. And then I'm going to just put, cut it and rip it. So I'll just put a little snip in it. All right. So 
I'm going to rip that and then I only need it to be 12 inches long. So then I'm going to do 12 right here and I'm just going to put a little snip with these lovely scissors that do not work. <laughs> All right, so you don't have any scissors. Um, just, yeah, that'd be good. But then they probably actually work. There we go. Great, thanks. Okay, so I'm just going to do a little snip here. And I'm going to rip that. Okay, so there's our fabric. Okay, so now we're going to block it. Okay, and so I'm going to show you how to block it. And actually, I forgot, I need a couple L squares if you want to grab. So first, I'm going to just press this and get it nice and flat. Now the irons in the back work really great for this. This is such a small little piece, this will be just fine here. And when you come to class, if you can come with your fabric ripped in the size that you need it, and if you can have it all blocked. Now when you block it, it does take a minute for it to cool. And so if you want to come in and block it first, great, thank you. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set it here. And I'm going to line it up to an L square. Okay, I will show you this. I can kind of lift it up and show you once I get it pinned. But we're going to line it up to an, uh, to an L square here. Okay. <clears throat> when you line it up, you want to put your pins kind of going in towards your fabric. Okay. And some of your muslin will be hard to block because it will be way off, and some won't. It's hard to see that at the store where you buy it. But, okay, see how I've got that lined up? And then once I get that lined up at a 90 degree angle, then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to line this one up to that one. Okay? And see, that one lines up pretty good, but it's a little bit off here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin that. And I have to pin this over, but first I'm going to uh, just kind of line up where I need it so I can get the iron in there. Now, Normally when you iron, <clears throat> when you, uh, you don't want to, like when we're sewing, we usually press, which means we press it down and then bring it up. But on this time, I'm going to iron. And I'm going to iron across the bias. Normally we don't do that because it stretches out your fabric, right? But I'm going to do that. Okay. And let's look and see if we got it where we want it to go. So this one lines up pretty good okay and if you want on the bigger pieces see now that one needs to come up a little bit okay so I'm gonna pin that up here and then on the bigger pieces you'll want to just take a L square you might even just use two like this okay and that's pretty good the only thing is this I've got a little bit of this can you see how I've got some of this to work in um, but when you're working with bias, it's usually not hard to do. You can usually kind of press it in, go across the bias, and it'll just shrink right back into shape or go where it's supposed to go. Okay? All right. And that's it. You don't want to have pins in here with plastic heads. Make sure that if you just use the pins with no heads. Okay, once you get it there, then you're going to let it cool for a minute. All right? because we want it to kind of set. All right, I'm just going to check this one side. Okay, that's pretty good. All right. So when you guys block, <coughs> use the um, blocking boards and put them on the tables with those big irons in the back, the steam irons. I've just ordered three new steam irons. So if they're not working, let me know. And then when you have it like this, if you have to run somewhere before it's cooled, just put your name on it. Just say, we'll be back, or so-and-so. Kylie, don't mess with this, or else. <laughs>
you'll have to answer to me. So <laughs> anyway, so put that in there, let it cool, and then when you're ready, we'll start draping. All right? So far, so good. Okay, let's look in our book really quick. Okay, and one thing that we're going to talk about... Um, okay, so let me find... I'm looking for the... Here we are, the Mandarin Collar on page 376. All right? In your book, it shows how they've um, stylized the edge here, but we're not going to do that on this one. I'm just going to drape it, and then I'll show you how you can go back and, and stylize that edge if you like. Okay, I think this is good. Okay, so when we drape, <clears throat> this is kind of what we're going to do. <clears throat> we're going to do this, all right? But to begin with, we've got to put in some guidelines, all right? So let's talk about our guidelines. Okay, so the first thing is we have to have a guideline <clears throat> for the lengthwise grain and the crosswise grain. Okay, and typically what we do is we plan for a one inch seam allowance. <clears throat> ah, just coughing here. Anyway, please excuse that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a cross grain or lengthwise grain here for center back. Then I'm going to do a cross grain here to start around this neck. Okay, and it'll go here. So if you notice, remember we talked about how this is a right angle here, just right here for a little ways until it starts to curve down. So that's the first thing we're going to do. <clears throat> Maybe I'll get a drink of water. <clears throat> 